exist, the current in-game leader of Ninjas in Pajamas, as a player where for CSGO fans, just for more modern day fans, it's going to be quite difficult to actually understand the full context of his career because where he is now, the, the role he plays now, his level of success, his status as a player is very, very different from where he was for the majority of his career actually in CS 1.6. So in 1.6, he was a player where even as early, well, even as far back now comparatively, but as late within CS 1.6's lifespan as like 2009, was a complete unknown internationally. No one knew him, he didn't go on any big tournaments. He just played in Swedish tournaments, like the, the regional ones, and he was playing in these mixed teams. And the first place he actually popped up at all was for a total underdog who got an upset win. It was this team called Cold Frag, and he was playing with a player called Baba, who would later be known as a good opera. And they managed to upset MTW, who was this famous team, one of the most legendary Danish teams of all time, with guys like Trace on, and actually at the time, MTW had just taken uh, a stand into this tournament, so even this upset, which was only a 16-14 on train at DreamHack Winter 2009, wasn't considered that crucial a, a, a particular result, and they, they ended up getting knocked out very easily by not a very good team in the playoffs, Then, they, but then the same team went along to Arbolite Cup Europe right after that in December. And this was another big LAN tournament with a lot of good teams there, and they managed to have some close results, play close games against some top-level teams there, Evil Geniuses, they had okay result against Alternate, and so, okay, they were making a name for themselves a little bit, like maybe there's some potential within this lineup, but usually when that happens, an upset happens, you're usually waiting to see, like, okay, who are the actual good players in that lineup? And at the time, you know, Exist wasn't the guy we were looking at, we are maybe looking at Barbar when he had some big frags, especially in that train game. Exist was just another guy in this lineup, and they had some skilled players in this lineup, so sort of like semi-pro level Swedish players like Zippy who obviously had a great movie if you've ever seen it Zippy 3 is a very good CS 1.6 movie 2010 was when Exist starts to emerge because he, he partners up with Pronax who's now the leader in Fnatic obviously in-game leader and he plays in this H2K lineup which initially it starts out as a decent result goes third at the gathering but then crucially it gets some more good players from the semi-pro scene in Sweden and, and players who've been around this sort of like third or fourth level teams they get like Furta, Crystal, Nico and they make this lineup that actually has like a magical run through DreamHack summer of 2010 they managed to beat Fnatic which Obviously, I had like Forrest, Get Right, Khan, legendary names on it. They managed to beat Fnatic and they managed to go all the way to the final and they lost there to MTW, same MTW I was referring to before. Then after that, they managed to follow that up by having a fourth Arbol at Cup Dallas. So, okay, they were starting to now get into like international level range of placings, you know, like you're not you're not like a god tier team, you're not like the best team in the world, but okay, you know, you're sort of around that, probably around that level of like fifth to sixth to seventh sort of teams in the world. Then what happened was, in beating Fnatic and in going to this Ablet Cup Dallas, etc., around this time was when Fnatic removed Threat. And Threat had just been a role player in Fnatic, but historically he was always known as one of like the third or fourth best in-game leaders in Sweden. So when he was available, this team that was Exist was a part of kicked out um, Pronax and they took in Threat as their in-game leader and they became Lions. That was the name of the team for the rest of 2010 and going into 2011. And immediately they had some more good results. So they managed to win Aces Summer, which is the tournament which Navi was at, but actually someone else, the K23 of Adren, managed to beat Navi and knock them out there, but they managed to win a tournament. It was like a, a, a tier three level tournament. And then they managed to finish third at the MSI B tier and third at DreamHack Winter. So okay, now they now they were like, with with threat in place, now they were establishing themselves as like a, a more solid team overall. Like now they were probably around like the fourth or fifth range. That was like a reasonable range, but they, they still had something lacking. They weren't gonna win an event. And now, in this latter half when they had this run, now was when Exist really emerged. Now people started to look at like, oh, maybe he's the star player in this team. Like he was quite a good rifler, he seemed to have some good moves on him. And so people started to say, okay, this guy's a star. And he was he was potentially a good pickup for a better team. And so what happened was at the end of 2010, again, a Fnatic move was what caught, was the catalyst behind this because Get Right, Gux and Forrest, the three stars of Fnatic, left the team over a dispute over whether they were whether they could remove other players from the team. And when they left and went to SK, Fnatic was left in the span of about a month having to just scramble to pick up players to be in their lineup before the big IEM European Championship. And so the players they picked up, they picked up Delpan, who's like a potential star opera, but people thought he had attitude problems. They picked up Peter, who was just like a decent rifler who'd been on some decent teams in 
back in 2009, end of it, but not so good in 2010. And then they picked up Exist. And now there's a lot of burden on Exist's shoulders now because he's replacing like Forrest and get right, like superstar players who carry the whole game. And back in 1.6, these level players really could to a degree carry games almost single-handedly, not entirely, but they could have a huge game impact. So Exist was like, and his team, when you look at the team on paper, they were never gonna be at that level. Now what's amazing, and this is where the story gets interesting, is it the first event that they play in 2011, the one that was the European Championship, which in a weird way, okay, it wasn't a major, because for a start of only Europeans could play in it, obviously, but it was as good as a major because it was all the best European teams. So in a weird way, it was sort of a tier two event, but it actually was one of the closest events to a tier one. It was very, very stacked, these events. Well, amazingly, Fnatic went on this miracle run where they managed to beat Na'Vi, they managed to beat MTW in the final, and they win the whole event with this brand new lineup. And so, one obviously, people are initially like, "Wow, were we wrong about these players? Was this team? Wow, this, is this going to be the new best team in the world? Has Fnatic done it again? Like, Khan's got a totally new team and he's won an event." The storyline was crazy, and more crazy than that was Exist's performance because, okay, in the playoffs, he, he was just a good player, but in the play, I mean, in the group stage rather, but in the playoffs, he like progressively got better, and then in the final, he went completely nuts, and he was one of the main reasons they won it. Like, there's a famous clip when he's on um, the pistol round of, of Train where he has like a deagle and he's literally down to like next to no bullets and he's just killing like everyone and it, it, and this other player, I think it was Arcadian, misses all his UOP bullets and Exist managed to kill him and, and he almost aces that. He might even ace that round in fact. And obviously in 1.6, pistol rounds were huge by the way. You weren't going to win many anti -eco, uh, many eco rounds rather in that, in that game. So this performance was like a huge breakout performance. And the thing about his skills back at this time was... He wasn't some get right or forest. Like he wasn't some super god like sick aimer, and he wasn't the guy who was like all precision. His style at the time was actually more like, I think he used like a slightly higher sensitivity than a lot of the good aimers back then, and so his style looked very much like he used like a decently high sensitivity and used his wrist a lot because his style was kind of like very streaky spraying, and if he got you in the mid range of his spray, like if he pushed up to the electric box on trainers CT and he shot you at the at the T mid. That was the sort of area where his spray was gonna be the best and he could kill two or three people, but it wasn't super reliable. It was good, but it wasn't super reliable. And so that's kind of his style. He was kind of a streaky player, you know, but he wasn't wasn't a godlike player. And actually, even though this tournament was a huge performance and they had this great breakout, after that, you, you never really saw that replicated. He never had another tournament. That was like the tournament of his life. And that was the tournament of Fnatic's lives because after that, the next tournaments, I mean, it just got progressively worse for them. They were like finishing outside the top four a whole bunch of times. And eventually, DSM retired from their team and they started to bring in these other players. And that's when they started to pick things up because they got like Fries, the Danish Orper, who you, you might know him now. He's He was in like my XMG in CSGO most recently and he played for Copenhagen Wolves at the end of 2013. This was a... Um, they picked it up towards the end of the year after these disastrous results and they managed to win IEM Guangzhou in China, which admittedly didn't have any elite level teams there. They managed to have some solid other results, finished top two, beat Russia. They won DreamHack Winter. They had another amazing run. They won DreamHack Winter, a tournament that had all the good teams in it. But what's amazing is all the elite teams, the top three teams in the world were on the other side of the bracket, beat each other. And then at the last minute, out of all them playing each other, Lions, Threats team, which was the other, remember the team that he'd been a part of exist, managed to beat Na'Vi amazingly in the semi and get to the final, and then Fnatic beat the Lions team. So it was weird, because they did win a huge event that was, well, not huge, but like a tier two event that was stacked with lots of good teams. But it was also weird, because they didn't actually have to beat any of those really elite teams. So, okay, but whatever, they won the title. And obviously, Exist was like one of the main stars in their team at the time. I think Freese was probably doing better towards the end then. And then going into 2012, they had some lineup changes. They got in Modi, um, it didn't go well initially actually it went almost back to the, the almost back to the poor form of before they'd taken in freeze where they couldn't place top three iam kiev they they got out of outside of top four at the world championship which is the last big major in cs 1.6 and, and after that tournament that was like khan's last tournament he retired so what's interesting now is that now exist takes over as the in-game leader of fanatic and remember he was just like a second he was sort of like a second star type player with like some streaky skills and he's mainly a rifle guy and a skill player so you don't expect someone like that to be able to take over an in-game leader and have success with it and at the time with the teams that are around there navi's still a very consistent team always placing top three always making major finals 
Um, SK's been a great team for, at the end of the last year. The Poles have just won this major and they've been a very strong team throughout 2011. So you don't expect Fnatic now with this new team because they picked up Carrigan. You don't think that actually they're going to win things now. But this is what's interesting is now Fnatic rose up and became the dominant team actually in the world. Like they won Copenhagen Games. They, um, they won DreamHack Summer. They won Game Goon. And now this is what's interesting. And, and by the way, they had this line with Gooks and yeah, that's the only thing I should mention. They brought, brought Gooks back in. They had, so they were winning a bunch of tournaments in a row and they'd now established themselves as the best team. They were placing ahead of Na'Vi, they were placing ahead of the Poles of Neo and them and those guys. But what's interesting now is in the midst of their dominant run and Fnatic would go on to win the rest of the tournaments for 1.6, the big ones, Exist leaves. He leaves and he goes to form a CSGO team with Get Right and Forest, which becomes Ninjas in Pajamas. Now, what's interesting now is, if you're listening to the story now and you're from the modern day, you're like, ah, oh, this is where it gets good. Like, that was the best move he could have made. And he got it at the right time and he forms the best, the most dominant team ever. What's funny is, at the time, it was a very confusing move because, first and foremost, Exist isn't some superstar player with a great history of success and winning. And now is when he's finally gotten to the best team in 1.6 and he's winning stuff. And we all know at the time, there's still a few tournaments left in 1.6. There's still some stuff to win and some and a chance to kind of extend that streak. You haven't been beaten yet and show that you are the dominant team and like go out on a high in 1.6. And then you'll switch to CSGO. You know, CSGO is very, very small at the beginning. And so I remember talking to Khan at the time and we were really puzzled by this move because we were thinking to ourselves like, why would you quit now? Like, you've got a team around you that's really good. Like, people seem to know what's going on. It's flowing. You're in the midst of a great streak and instead you gamble it all and go and make this new team. And at the time, I mean, I, my theory was, I, I just kind of put it down to like, wow, unfortunately this guy must just be a big fan, a, kind of a fanboy of Get Right and Forest because actually that's the thing about the Swedish scene. Almost all the other players who were skilled players, to some degree, were fanboys of Get Right and Forest. Like they kind of acknowledged, like these are the great players, and if you ever got a chance to play with them, of course you were going to take that chance because these are the, some of the greatest players of the era. You know, if you want to win titles and you want to be a, a great, great player yourself, join up with them. Right, that seems like the right answer. So I can understand why he did it in that sense. But obviously, it actually turned out this gamble worked better than even he could have known because, at this point, I'm sure many of you know how the story goes because. NIP wins all the first sort of, they went, I, think, I don't know what it was, the first five or six events. In terms of offline map record, they go 87 and zero in map wins until finally they lose to Virtus Pro at Star Series. I think it was five LAN finals in about April of 2013. And then even beyond that, they only ever get stopped every now and then by really amazing play like from Virtus Pro and then eventually from Very Games. And they're just winning, 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 winning. And they're winning all these tournaments and then they may, after that, you can, I'm sure a lot of people know the story now, they make all four of the major finals. They finally win one at ESL 1 Cologne. And it wasn't until about, I think it was about the summer, so late summer of, that no, was about July of 2014, that they finally started to drop off from being an elite top four all the time level team, always making finals, always making semi-finals, very hard to beat. And so the level of success now exists had now, adding in the CS amount is very, very high. But for CS 1.6, it was kind of a bit meager. And then he had the strong run towards the end. But then in terms of like winning the big events with all the best teams there, but then it was the CSGO stuff that is obviously above and beyond anything else. No one's been more successful except people in his own team. And obviously they were the stars. Now in CSGO, what's interesting is he's always been the in-game leader, except for this brief period at the beginning where Fiflaren was. And then this brief period kind of at the beginning of 2014 where they had Fiflaren being game leader again. But when Exist has been the in-game leader, he's the one who's kind of used this loose style. And by the way, what's interesting about that is that has its seeds in his time as the in-game leader at the end of 1.6. Because the team he was a part of in 1.6 that he was the in-game leader of, what made them really weird was they had all these sort of like second or third star sort of skill level players, but they had no one super superstar player because actually Gux when he was in the team wasn't at the level he'd been at years before and he, he couldn't really carry on his own. So they just had a lot of like really skilled players. And at the time I made a comment where I compared them to a team composed almost entirely of um, midfielders like a football team so you don't have any scorer you don't have any defenders you've just, just got all midfielders but what's interesting is they managed to make that work I mean there have been other teams that were comparable to that by the way the MTW team of 2008 was a bit like that the Mouse Sports team of that era was a bit like that like the key thing if you have a style like that is if the players know their roles and you don't make it too restrictive as a unit you can be a bit quite versatile by having that because you have a lot of good players in different positions 
And so in theory, it doesn't matter who dies first or who dies last. You've got, you've got players who can win each part of the game. But it's hard to manage that because you, can, you need a bit of autonomy on the player's part. So as an in-game leader, the best approach then is to have a general concept and general idea of what people want to do, but then make it a bit looser and make it just like mid-round calls on what we're doing and have basic setups that start the same way each time. And then we call it reactively or we decide something within the round. And what he'd done with that in Fnatic is essentially what he then brought to see it CSGO and brought to Knit and IP and that's what's made Nip famous. So on the one hand you have to give credit in as much as there are some good calls going on here and there's some good adaptions within it but at the same time it's not the same as like the very intensive like existence style of like I know exactly what I want to do and people have to do it this way and that and so in a weird way you have to give more in-game leading credit to people like existence in that sense but Exist picked a style that worked very well for his team, his personnel, and then it allowed his players within there to make the great plays, and so they get some credit for that aspect. Within the NIP style, he actually plays kind of what is suited to how I categorized him from 1.6. In sort of second tier teams, he was like the best or the second best player. In the in the better teams, he was sort of a second or third best level player. That's what he was, like a tier or two tier two or tier three level star wasn't going to be like a get right out forest so that's kind of what they used him as in nip he would be kind of like the third man in like freeburg and forest would go in then exist would go in in the middle area of the round and that's kind of like where he's at in terms of like his spraying similar sort of aiming style like a bit streaky but it can be good sometimes never never usually drops off a lot he is one of the people who's had a worse period of time in the latter days of nip when they've been going off i thought he was one of the people who really disappeared and obviously the in-game leading style wasn't working so well a hallmark of his career during his time in an IP, I think one of his best strengths has been that he's a good pressure game player and a good clutch round player. Now, that doesn't mean he does it all the time, but the key thing is in the big games, in the big tournaments, that's when he tends to come up with the clutches. Like, he seems to have a, a, a natural self-confidence in that respect. I don't think he's, like, a cocky player like that. It's more like a natural self-confidence where he seems to know that, like, okay, we need to win this round and I can break it down like this. Like, I'm going to go for this guy first and I'll position myself here. And it's kind of, it's very intuitive, actually. Like, you can see some decision making, but you can also see somewhere he just understands that this is how it has to be to try and win this round here. And doesn't seem to get phased by the moment in that sense. Like he doesn't seem to think like, oh God, I have to win this round. If I don't kill this guy, the guy behind me, will get... he doesn't seem to get bothered by that sort of thing. He just positions himself and just, just goes for what he can do. Just gives it his best. And you've seen it, it works out crucially a lot of times. I mean, one of the most famous clutches he ever did, obviously, was that like ridiculous scenario when he was like 1v3 or something on dust against i think it was like team x it was called that team that had pronax on interestingly his ex in-game leader where he did the through the smoke diffuse on dust two at a and he manages to get it in crazy ballsy scenario where if they lose that round basically they're out in the group stage and they wouldn't have won that dreamhack summer 2013 and we'd actually made i mean listen they'd still been a great team but it would have added a little bit of a black mark to the, even that amazing stretch of run that they'd had there because They'd had some map losses beforehand, so maybe the storyline then would be like, oh, and people are catching up and they're going to lose. So it would have been interesting. Obviously, they went on to get go and win that tournament and continue to be an elite level team and never place below top four. That would have broken their top four streak. That's kind of been one of his strengths, his clutch player. I do feel like out of their team, sometimes maybe he's been overcredited, like I said, with some of the in-game leading and some of the aspects. He has played with some very great players, well, two of the greatest players ever and the greatest player in the history of CSGO. So you, know, you can't... You can't overpraise tactics that work around some of the best players ever in their ideal positions. But at the same time, you should also acknowledge like understanding like man management, understanding what to give different players and then how to kind of like synthesize and be the guy who integrates what each player separately, disparately is doing into the into the team cohesion. So I give credit for that and I give credit for the great clutch play and performance play and, and play under pressure crucially. And I think actually for me, within an IP, Yes, Get Right was the star who always delivered in the big game. He, would, If you hadn't have had that, NIP would have won significantly less tournaments. But the two guys who always held it together for NIP to me, the guys who just weren't stars, but they could do like a solid performance in the key games that mattered in general, it, it was usually Exist and Freeburg for me. They were the guys who, after Get Right, really had to have their solid performances, and that would make up the framework of NIP. Then if Forrest has a good game, then if Free Flying just keeps it together and contributes well, then they can be unstoppable, then they can win games just from other things. But that, that's the core of NIP, is the great Get Right Scar performance, and then the Freeburg solid entry performance, and then winning the clutches and the mid-round performance of Exist. That was the framework of how NIP worked and their success. So that's who Exist is. It was a different guy early on, very, very different in terms of role and what he was doing and star level, but you see how it, it evolved and changed over the years and now he got to where he is now which is a totally different place but he's been 
successful beyond your wildest dreams.